Call the meeting to order. Oh, please rise. I ask you to join me in a moment of reflection on the business that's before us this evening. And please join me in a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, please take the roll. Alderman Bassett. Here. Here. Alderman Bagley. Here. Alderman Bylet. Here. Alderman Clifford. Here. Alderman Key. Here. Alderman Lewandowski. Here. Alderman Montgomery. Here. Alderman McGrogan. Here. Your city clerk treasurer. No. All right. Fine. Thank you. We have a special presentation tonight from uh, Lake Catherine. So, Jerry, uh, do you want to introduce your clan there? And yeah. Uh, thank you. Hello. Thank you for letting us come tonight. Uh, appreciate the invitation. It's uh, you know it's almost 35 years for Lake Catherine. Would you believe it? So uh, hopefully you'll enjoy this presentation as much as we have. So we are starting at the and this is Gareth. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Terry, by the way. <laughs> um, I'm chair of the board of Lake Catherine, the uh, uh, nonprofit board, and. Uh, our board has been very, very active and very busy this year, particularly, and we've had a very successful year, and we're happy to continue the cooperation with the city of Palos Heights. So this is our story, the history of Lake Catherine. So let's start. So prior to 2005, 1938, Palos, there was a Palos Gun Club. I know some of you may not even realize that. There was a gun club, and it was just at the entryway of Lake Catherine. And that gun club is now the Simpsons Clubhouse. And uh, I can remember just from my personal uh, experience, I lived on 75th Avenue, and my kids used to walk down to the gun club and come home with all kinds of clay pigeons. And I thought, oh, good, you know, what do we do with these things? So, uh, and there was a lot, the dredging was done to increase, to widen the canal and, and access to Lake Michigan. So in 1985, Mayor, uh, former Mayor Simpson be, began dreaming about the future for the Nature Center. As he walked over to the facility, he realized what a mess it was, because it was dredge soil that was dredged from, uh, uh, from the dredgings from the canal. And he also found abandoned cars and all kinds of garbage out there. And so it was actually kind of a dump, basically, be right behind the gun club. So he planned for the future of Lake Catherine. A uh, lease was signed with the Metropolitan Water District in the city of Payless Heights, and there was a site plan by Ives Ryan in 1988. The, the gun club structure was moved <coughs> and became the beginning of Lake Catherine. In uh, 1990, there was a prairie planted, the children's forest, a naturalist was hired, and then there was an organization called the Friends of Lake Catherine, a group of very dedicated volunteers who helped out to uh, make Lake Catherine what it was. They did, they volunteered for activities, they helped with fundraising and things of na that nature. And we continue to have a very, very strong and dedicated group of volunteers. We have over 50 volunteers working at Lake Catherine. We couldn't do the job without them because uh, we don't have, you know, we just don't have the manpower and woman power. Uh, in 1991, the waterfall was completed, and I think that you all uh, have been to the waterfall and, and, and appreciate its, its natural beauty. We have a lot of, lot of interest in the waterfall besides the kids walking through barefoot in there, but we also have uh, weddings, parties, activities, a lot of photo shoots at, at, during, at the waterfall because it is a very attractive part of Lake Catherine. In 1994, the Environmental Learning Center was constructed. I, going back in the history, I understand that it was, it was a project that was uh, helped funded through the influence of uh, former uh, Senator Pat O'Malley, and uh, he, who is still in our area. And I believe <clears throat> there were some aldermen that were involved in that as well, Eugene uh, Passarelli, et cetera. Uh, so the, we had the learning center constructed, and then and a few years later, then the, there was an additional uh, uh, an addition put onto it, and now that's the auditorium where we, we do have uh, events planned. 
There was a memorandum of understanding signed between the city of Palos Heights and with a newly established nonprofit Lake Catherine Nature Center and Botanic Gardens. And we, we continue to work with that um, memorandum of understanding. It's renewed generally every five years. I think this, however, has been, uh, we've extended it for another couple of years, I believe, until we're gonna get, talk about it again. Lots of improvements from 2005 to 221. If you take a look at the upper left-hand corner, one of, the, one of the very proud things that I personally have to mention is that the Payless Heights Women's Club installed this anniversary garden. <clears throat> it took uh, several years of planning, fundraising. It was over close to over $80,000 to create this facility. If you remember, some of you who are here, the, it was just a flat, flat, uh, just a flat uh, piece of land full of goose droppings. So you couldn't even walk through it to get to the lake because you know you, you were in danger all of the time. So uh, with the efforts of the, the women's club and uh, the people on the board at Lake Catherine created this particular beautiful garden and it is a major attraction for weddings and ceremonies and parties and, and events that we have in the evening. We've had other things in the 2012, the Heritage Garden, which was at the very far, far east of the property, was moved so that it was a bit closer so that people could see what it was like. And the Heritage Garden is man is, uh, by the- U of I Extension uh, Service. And they grow uh, vegetables, which are then harvested and sent to the food pantries, local food pantries. So it's a very positive thing that they do and we're brought proud of that. We had a master site plan <coughs> that was completed. And uh, so we are working with the site plan to see what improvements that we're going to make to, to Lake Catherine. In 2014, the entryway bridge was installed. Uh, it was improved. The old one was torn down because it was rickety and, and dangerous, and we have a new one now. 2015, there is a play area that was a children's play area that was installed. It's called Kaboom. And the play area, the equipment is not <coughs> normal swings and slides and you know those kinds of things. It's, it's a log and it's a high chair and it's things that kids can use to climb on and enjoy in nature. And it's just a little bit of a, a little different perspective for them, but they have an awfully good time. And in that area with the children's forest, trees were planted there uh, soon after Lake Catherine was established. And so that's why it was called the children's forest. And that's where the children's programs main, are generally held, their camps, their day programs, things of that nature. And they have a wonderful time. I took a hike out there last summer and I mean, the kids were just all over the place. They loved it. In uh, 2016, we had, it was 25 years of Lake Catherine. We had a foundation, a grant for, for a pollinator area that west of the lake. We had the herb garden that was rebuilt by Eagle, an Eagle Scout. We have a good relationship with the boys and Boy Scouts. I don't know, I'm not so sure how many Girl Scouts we have involved. We do have Girl Scouts too. So, but the Boy Scouts come out and they look for projects to do, maintain and create at Lake Catherine and we're happy to have them. We have a, have a very, very beneficial relationship with NICOR, and we have, they are very, very helpful in it, uh, giving us grants for specific things and for specific improvements at Lake Catherine. In 2019, they uh, gave us a grant to install a entryway kiosk, which was very helpful to introduce Lake Catherine to visitors and to show them, you know, some of the areas and, and, and where to go for information. We have another organization called the Do Good Movement They've created a meditation garden. And we also have had all arbors replaced around the waterfall, again, with a grant from NICOR. 2022. All right. I'm going to let Gareth take over. So thank you, Terry. So in all intents and purposes, we're treating 2022 as our present. So <coughs> we believe this is one of our most successful years that we've had at Lake Catherine. Uh, it's a landscape where everyone can connect with nature. Uh, it also was one of the years that we were able to have um, $85,000 in donations alone. So that's really when a nonprofit starts to fulfill its mission of, of fundraising and doing the things that we're meant to be doing. The nice thing about coming out of such a successful year is it now allows us to start to be able to plan for the future, which is actually a great kind of place to be in. 
Um, but we've been continuing on doing a number of different things. We had 400 plus dedications, not just in the last year, but we were up to 400, about 425 now. And these are dedications throughout the years, meaning that Lake Athens is a special place for people when they come to remember a loved one. We also, after the, the pandemic hit us hard, and so a lot of our volunteer base really kind of got dropped down. But last year, we did a little bit of a resurgence, we did a big push, and so we went basically doubled from 30 to 60 um, just in one year. So we meant that we were able to get volunteers back in the gardens, back on the grounds, really helped us out enormously. Um, and that was also, a lot of that was to help with one of our partners, the University of Illinois Extension Service. They do a lot of kind of work with different groups. We wouldn't be able to do some of the things that we did without them. One of the things we've also were able to do, our school program suddenly picked right back up. We went from really not having much going on because schools weren't, weren't going out. They were, had so many protocols in place. And then all of a sudden, spring of last year, they started coming back. So we went up from you know, a few hundreds, maybe up to a thousand kind of uh, school uh, children coming around to over 4,000 last year, which is a really good place to be. The other thing that we started kind of dialing into a bit last year is senior programs. Somehow we, we started advertising a few senior things, and so now we, we do uh, senior living in Palace Heights, we've been working with them, so we do a, a monthly program for them, and we've had other groups come out to us asking whether we'd be interested to do more senior groups. And also, you, seniors are often an underserved group, and that's one of the things we want to expand into. That alone, also we were able to do a lot of our kind of uh, ecological restoration work. So I get very excited about doing prescribed burns. I don't know if anyone else does, but we love to burn as much as we can over at Lake Catherine because it's good for the environment. It promotes healthy growth. It uh, prevents invasive species. But on top of that, we planted 58 trees of about five or six feet high. A lot of those were for dedications, but some of them were not. Um, 32 shrubs, so that's anything that's basically a smaller woody thing. And then we also were planting 225 native perennial plants as well last year. We also had our native plant sale on top of that where we sold an additional 2,000 plants to the public. And these all native plants are beneficial to pollinators. Um, our canoe and kayak rentals, which was uh, uh, given to us with the seed money from the Beautification Committee many years ago now, but it's been a program that's continued to have success. So we had about 3,200 plus people using our canoe and kayaks last year, which is a really good place to be, and it's one of our main kind of revenue bases consistently coming up. And the other thing we've been doing is, during the pandemic, it was very hard to connect with people, maintain those relationships. But last year, we were really able to get those community uh, partnerships up and going. Some of them are new, some of them are re-established. So we're very excited to kind of start working with people again in a, a much more fruitful way, which has been exciting. So all of that means, so 2022 was a very good year for us. And so that means it gives us a base to work on for the future. And that means a variety of different projects. So you may have heard already something called the Mayor Strauss Boathouse and Boardwalk, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. Um, I know many of you are very familiar with the parking lots, which hopefully would be in 2024. So that's exciting too. And there's a couple of other different types of projects that we've been working on. We've actually put on hold until the parking lot is finished. One of them is we want to really update our festival grounds area. And that's basically the big green area next to the parking area. But I'll talk about that in just a second. And the other thing that we're trying to work on is updating our ramps around the nature center and really trying to get ourselves up to an ADA compatibility, which we haven't really been at before. We want to be, again, make this a place for everyone to be. And then coming up in just a couple of weeks, we're having our Anchor Peer Review, which is the Association of Nature Center Administrators, that's a mouthful. But that's what we have coming up in a few weeks, where they're going to be coming back and doing a peer review of Lake Catherine and its relationship with the city. So, to talk about the Mayor Strauss Boathouse and Boardwalk. So we have a lovely artist rendition in the top right-hand corner. This is somewhat what it looks like, but we used to have a floating pontoon dock in this area before. It was something that we took out because it wasn't really very safe, it wasn't very accessible. Um, but it'd be good to, uh, in keeping with our master site plan, so you might remember that one of the pictures back in 2012, we had a master site plan developed, and they basically said in that, you really need to have a proper boat area. And this is what we want to make this, a proper boat area, and obviously in, in, uh, in honor of our Mayor Strauss here, um, and beautify that area, make it a, a much usable space. Right now, we basically have a muddy slipway, and we have a wooden box where we keep our stuff. So it's really not a practical use of things, and this will really kind of, uh, kind of upgrade the area, make it beautiful, and be wonderful. Which brings us to our fundraiser that we have coming up. So we've got the Save the Day, we just sent that out last week. So on 4-14-2023, we'll be doing a fundraiser on Lake Catherine. We uh, believe this project will cost us about $100,000, and we're about $75,000 of already raised funds for that as well. So we're in a good process right now. We hope that you can make it to our fundraiser. So we'll be sending out proper invites 
in uh, probably in about uh, early part of March, mid-March, and that kind of thing. So we hope that some of you can attend that as we go forward. You might, probably many of you have seen this picture of the parking lot and the expansion of that. That's going to be a huge kind of thing. So just as a reminder, this is uh, hopefully going to be shovel ready in 2024, hopefully. Um, it's going to have bio swells, it's going to have permeable pavers, and also has the turnaround at the end. It's going to really help benefit Lake Catherine in a number of different ways. And thank you for the Polar Works Department. Adam Jasinski's done a lot of work on this, and, and so he's really kind of uh, been good to work with and kind of works with the different entities like IDOT and then BRD and all that kind of stuff. So it wouldn't be happening without him, but he's done a really great job. And it's going to be very exciting for Lake Catherine and moving forward. That will allow us to hopefully upgrade our festival ground. So this shows you a bit better idea of what the area actually is. So if the, the road on the right is the service drive that goes past our heritage garden, and obviously the parking in the bottom is the regular parking lot. So the idea is we have fundraised uh, for this a number of years ago. We put this on hold because we wanted to make sure we got the parking kind of expansion done before we kind of upgrade this area. And one of the things we want to do with this area is create ADA walkways, flatten out that area. It's basically a depression there right now. And what happens with that is it pulls water. And so that's not very good when you're trying to do uh, tent events and weddings and that kind of thing. So we want it to be more accessible with the ADA accessibility, make it more usable for multiple different types of events, but still keep the area mostly open, as you can see. And then it also would have other native plantings and that kind of thing going into it. So that's something that we will hopefully be working on as we go forward. And then one of our uh, kind of overviews is going to be this Anchor Peer Review, which I just mentioned. So it's been 19 years since the original review, and that was back in about 2004, 2005. <coughs> and that's when they kind of, uh, the association came out and they made recommendations for the nonprofit to be formed and the relationship and the MOU between the city, uh, uh, Palos Heights, and Lake Catherine was developed. Um, so that's coming up on March 10th and 11th. They're going to be doing a variety of different focus groups over uh, two days. And they'll be going to be given an oral uh, presentation on the Saturday, which is the 11th in the afternoon. Um, and we have an official time slot for city officials, which is at 8.30 a.m., nice and early on a Saturday morning. So if you can attend, that'd be really great. If you can let me know also, that would also be really good as well, so we can have a list of the names so they know who is coming to that as well. So We'll be in contact. Yes, we'll absolutely. Be in contact. So it's really exciting, and then about a month after that oral presentation, they'll be given a, uh, uh, a document that will be sent over to us as well. So it's an exciting time. It go, they're going to be reviewing operations, um, governance, and our finances, and how that all interrelates and how things are going. So it should be a good thing. So some of the things we're also working on is, these are sort of projects and things that we've been talking about. We'll, we, we really want to expand our education department. We want to uh, reach underserved communities as best as we can. And we want to expand into adult and senior education. So these are places that we haven't expanded to in before. We want to get uh, to underprivileged children. And we also want to get to underserved communities as best we can. We would love also at some point to expand our education department so that we can reach more people. What we found is with our education, it pretty much brings in the money that we spend on it. So it doesn't necessarily bring in profit, but it brings in what we spend on that. We could probably, if we expand our education, it probably would do the same um, because it, it, that's what it works. So we want our mission is to connect people with nature. We've got a strong environmental education ethic, and that's one of the things we would love to expand to in the future. As part of that, and as part of everything that we do, is uh, diverse, diversity, equity, inclusivity. We're working on this in a variety of different areas. It also goes from how you advertise things, which is our marketing, but also simple things like our ramps and ADA doors. That's part of it, trying to get accessibility. Making sure that this boathouse and ramp and dock is also accessible for people. Kind of making nature uh, so it can be available to everyone is a key part. The nice thing about something like Lake Catherine is it's close to people, it's close to urban areas, it's close to where people live. So there's no reason why we can't move towards making it as more accessible as we can forward. Key part of it is we set up uh, sustainability is a key part of what we do. Uh, green team, uh, we set up a green team a couple of years ago, then it got shut down with a pandemic, then we started back up again. And it's a group of people who are volunteers and we meet pretty much once a month. It's mostly Palace Heights people. Um, and what it's allowed us to do is a variety of collaborative community events. Uh, one of them is an Arbor Day tree program, uh, which is basically uh, Lake Catherine goes around and helps get people to put native trees in their garden. 
and that's helped with seed money from the beautification committee. So that basically means they're getting a tree at half the regular price, which is $50 for an oak tree, which is pretty darn good. An oak tree is a keystone species, so it's really important to put in. But there's other things we want to do as well. So we've got a bunch of Earth Day. We were doing a bioblitz this uh, spring as well, uh, which is basically a rapid assessment of all the fauna and flora you might find in an area. Um, but we also want to move into more kind of uh, recycling types of initiatives. One of the things we've been talking about is maybe even doing a, a pumpkin smash uh, later in the fall, which would be an exciting kind of thing. It's not just pump smashing pumpkins, but it would be quite fun to get them out of landfill and compost them. So we're also talking with a group that is actually uh, does composting for urban areas. So we hope that people would be able to utilize that. And it's also about um, educating the local community. So one of the things we do is a green note. So we send out to a number of people in the, in the neighborhood so that people go, oh, how do I recycle this? How do I do this? And so we do that uh, not quite monthly, but nearly monthly throughout the season so people can get a good chance and learn about how do I, how do I be more green and, and be more sustainable in my day-to-day -day actions. This brings us to uh, restorations, which is also part of sustainability. So we love to burn things, and these are all done. We have a burn permit and everything like that. We let the local dispatch know and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, what that helps is it helps promote native planting. So that's really, really important for us uh, because it helps with uh, things like uh, helping the monarch butterfly, which is a, a key pollinator as part of the Mayor's Monarch's Pledge. But that means it also promotes native plantings like uh, blazing star, golden rod, and milkweed. Milkweed is the host plant for the monarch butterfly. So having those kind of things actually out there, doing those kind of prescribed burns means it's a good way of, of promoting native growth. It also is a good way of pre preventing invasive species or help control it in a different way. And because of doing all that, it basically means you're increasing biodiversity because what you're doing is you're promoting native growth and you're preventing monocultures forming from invasive species. A key part of what we do is recreation, as I mentioned before, canoe and kayaks, and obviously that plays into a lot of things we were talking about earlier. Obviously, the, the Cowside Bike Trail is a huge impact to Lake Catherine. The number of bikers go, and I think it's uh, about 130,000 bikers every year or something like that. It's, it's a lot. Uh, don't quote me on that one. Um, but we also move into doing campouts as well. So we're doing uh, campouts during the summer, we're doing lots of different types of night hikes. So there's always a little bit of an education component to some of the things we do, but we hope people enjoy them as well. Uh, we do fishing programs. We partner with like the Worth Police Department where they have a, uh, a group of... Um, use that they bring out to actually help fish at Lake Catherine. But we've also been moving in towards doing things like reflection, yoga, and mindfulness. So that's where our partnerships with groups like the Do Good Movement is really, really useful for us. Um, but we also want like, to make sure that we still have our nature walks going. So we do pretty much during the season monthly nature walks where people learn about something about nature, they have a theme. Um, and so that's, it's still recreation, but it's still a fun thing for people to learn about what's going on at the lake. And so the big part of last year was re -getting, uh, getting our community basis back in. And obviously now we're able to start meeting with people. So it was reacquainting ourselves with old contacts, but also with new contacts. And that's just a list. I won't read them all out because it'll be really hard to. Uh, but that's a list of just some of the people that we're working with and begin to work with again also in the future. And that number is probably just a small number, a fraction of what we're, what we're actually doing. So these are communities, a big part of what Lake Catherine is. We have to be part of the community. Um, we get more done when we work with these different groups and it's, it makes Lake Catherine and makes the city of Palos Heights a better area. And it would be remiss of me not to mention our board of directors. So this year they committed to, I, I say it's the annual fundraiser, it was actually the inaugural fundraiser called Grow Lake Catherine. And what that's going to be doing is a fundraiser every year that the board has committed to doing. And it's probably going to be in spring, probably. And this year obviously they're going to be fundraising for um, the Mayor of um, Strauss boardwalk and boathouse and next year it probably will be a different type of project or, or something else of need. They're heavily involved in the community um, and we also were looking to expand um, the membership throughout um, the community and into different groups that we serve as well. Did you want to say a few words about that? I just want to introduce uh, Dan O'Reilly, one of our board members. I don't think we have anybody else here. Right, so he's one of the newer board members. Been very uh, happy to have him with us. Um, we have, currently we have nine members on our board. We, in our bylaws, we have a, a potential of 13. So we are looking for new board members. We have two potentials that we are looking at right now and, and hope uh, if, if you know of anybody who would be interested, we need to have people who are interested in 
the environment and of course know about Lake Catherine and are committed to supporting Lake Catherine because that's what our job is. As a nonprofit organization, that's what our job is. We are, we are the fundraisers for Lake Catherine as much as we can. And uh, most of the people live in the Palis area and we're happy, and so they are very familiar with Lake Catherine and the beginnings of it and, and, uh, and have contacts within the area as well. So if you have anybody that you think about that might be interested, please let me know. Give me a call or give Gareth a call, send out a name. We appreciate that, so. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for listening to us. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Yeah. thank you, appreciate the time. Thank you for your commitment to the City of Palos Heights. Thank uh, you. You're welcome. The jewel of the southwest suburbs. You always Absolutely. say that. I've been a resident over 50 years, so. And Dan was born here, I think, right? So. Yes, he was. We're committed. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> Moving right along. Consent calendar. I've got three items. The approval of minutes of the City Council meeting from uh, February 7th, 2023. The approval of the payroll and a voucher list for the period ending February 17th, 2023. And an approval of a special events permit request from the Parks and Recreation Department to conduct their annual Chocolate Chase 5K on Saturday, April 8th, from, uh, 2023, from 8 o'clock till 11 o'clock on a designated race, race area. Need a motion to approve the. I'll make the motion. Move by Alderman Severn, second by Alderman Clifford. <coughs> Discussion? Roll call. Alderman Clifford? Aye. Alderman McGovern? Yes. Alderman Key? Yes. Alderman Vasso? Aye. Alderman Violet? Yes. Alderman McGovern? I'm sorry, Alderman McGrogan? Yes. Alderman Lewandowski? Aye. Alderman Begley? Yes. Very good. All right, any seal bids? Nothing. I actually don't have anything tonight, City Clerk? No. City Treasurer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have the <coughs> Treasurer's report for the month ending January 31st, 2023. City General Fund began the month with $3,364,181. Revenues for January totaled $1,174,568. Expenses were $932,634. Other source use, $409,646, giving an ending cash balance <clears throat> in the general fund of $4,015,761. The total of all city funds began January with $23,221,188. Revenues citywide were $1,845,000. $574. Expenses totaled $1,283,901. Other source use, $977,559, giving an ending cash balance in all city funds of $24,760,421. That concludes my report, Mr. Mayor. Need a, need a motion to approve the Treasury report? Close. Move we'll by Alderman Violet. Second. Second by Alderman Key. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. City Attorney? No report. Any communications? Anyone have? Citizens wishing to address the council? Oh, surprise. Hmm. Harlan Waibota, 7640 West 135th Street. Orland Park section of Palos Heights. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody. I haven't seen everybody since last year. Uh, 2022 was a very filled plate for, the, for my family. Uh, we had all, all of my uh, legal problems with the county of Will were resolved in my favor. Uh, all of my problems with the county of Cook seemed to have gone my way and henceforward are, are seem to be going along well. My problem with the trash collector, with the help of the mayor and the alderman, we came to an amicable resolution and I feel that it was good for both parties. With the help of the mayor and Alderman McGrogan, my culverts were replaced by Cook County and uh, that was a very pleasant surprise for my family and myself, and thank you to the mayor and to the, to the alderman. Now, lo and behold, about 
pr most of since almost all of my issues my but I have an issue with Cook County that is ongoing but uh, that seems to be going in my favor as well so pretty much all I have left now for 2023 is my issue with the city of Palos Heights regarding the disbursement of water on my property and my dead trees several months ago I submitted to the to the city administrator that invoice has not come back to me either paid or or denied so I'm asking the city if they could ask the administrator to decline that invoice so that they can return it to me so that my wife and I can have a, a meeting and decide how we want to proceed from this day thank you okay. thank you any other citizens all right is there any committees Alderman McGrogan uh, Mr. Mayor no report this evening all right public safety Alderman Basso yes mayor I have no items on the agenda this evening all right Municipal grounds and property, Alderman Begley. No report this evening, Mayor. Right. Thank you. Planning and zoning, Alderman McGovern. No report this evening. All right. Yes. All right. Alderman Key. Okay. Got a bunch of stuff Thank there. you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve purchase of materials for pool deck repairs, exp uh, ex expending up to seventeen thousand five hundred hours with labor to be uh, completed by Public Works Department. This is a project that we're doing at the pool, one of the decks. Um, was in disrepair. It couldn't, I don't think we could use it last year. And um, with this uh, beautiful weather that we've actually been doing this month, uh, pu our public works <coughs> guys were able to uh, demolish that, that decking. And so with the purchase of this material, our guys from public works can actually rebuild that and it's going to save us a lot of money. Great. Is there a second to that, please? Second. Alderman, move by Alderman Bilet. Second by Alderman Bilet, I'm sorry. Roll call. Uh, Alderman Basso. Aye. Alderman Key. Yes. Alderman Lewandowski. Aye. Alderman Begley. Yes. Alderman Violet. Yes. Alderman McGovern. Yes. Alderman Clifford. Aye. Alderman <clears throat> Yes. Motion carries. And then I'd like to make a motion to approve payment for the second installment for 2022-23 membership contribution to the <laughs> Southwest <laughs> Special <laughs> Recreation <laughs> Association, <laughs> which is SWISRA, in the amount of forty-seven thousand. $230.50, and this is an amount of money that comes in through, you know, special funding, and we just turn around and, and basically are paying for the association with uh, SWISRA. Move by Alderman Key, is there a second? Second. Second, second moment, Violet, discussion? And a question. Yeah. Uh, uh, Alderman Key, is it, uh, could you explain that a little bit better? This, is that a push then? Like, it's a pass-through? Yes. Like, we get the money from somewhere yes. else and we just... but we have an association with... Swiss were so when there's uh, special needs here in town, we, we co-opt, you know, uh, different suburbs together into this association, and and then we can uh, share uh, resources. So this is every uh, every quarter? year we do this. It's, it's, part, of, it's, it's part of the tax levy. Yeah. Okay, but every quarter is it like you said? This is the second it's installment. Just, yeah. Is that no, once so every there's quarter? There's two of them a year. Two, two, oh, just by, two. Biannual. So it costs about a hundred grand. Give right. or take. Okay. Any questions? Roll call. Alderman Lewandowski. Aye. Alderman Clifford. Aye. Alderman Violet. Yes. Alderman McGovern. Yes. Alderman Bagley. Yes. Uh, sorry, Aye. Alderman Bagley. <coughs> yes. Okay. Um, Alderman McGrogan. Yes. Alderman Basso. Aye. Alderman Key. Yeah. A motion to approve Zanier Landscaping proposing an amount of $7,840 for spring and fall cleanup at Parks Swimming Pool and Recreation Center. This includes month monthly maintenance visits to the rec center, Walsh Westgate Park, Veterans Play Lot, and midsummer uh, pruning at the pool. Um, most of the landscaping is done by our public works guys, but this is the company that we use every year, um, and we rotate them around the different parks to do a, a little bit more uh, manicuring of the of the parks. Move by Alderman Key. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Violet. Discussion? Roll mm -hmm. call. Alderman Key. Yes. Alderman Begley. Yes. Alderman Clifford. Aye. Alderman Lewandowski. Aye. Alderman Violet. Yes. Alderman Basso. Aye. Alderman McGrogan. Yes. Alderman McGovern. Yes. Then I'd like to make a motion to approve the sound of music and video systems for the installation programming and purchase of a new projector for the orchard room in the amount of $5,639.79. So okay. Moved by Alderman Key, second by Alderman Clifford. Discussion? Roll call. <clears throat> Alderman Clifford. Aye. Alderman McGrogan. Yes. Alderman Lewandowski. Aye. Alderman Begley. Yes. Alderman Violet. Yes. Alderman Key. Yes. 
Alderman McGovern. Yes. Alderman Basso. Aye. And then I'd like to make a motion to adopt an ordinance amending the city code section 34.58 pertaining to the hours of operation for Lake Catherine and the Recreation Department Parks and Facilities. Last month, um, I believe it was last month, uh, we voted to change the hours of the parks from in the morning and evening hours. This uh, change um, brings Lake Catherine into that same uh, set of hours. Okay, move our element keys or second. Second. Second Alderman Violet. Discussion? Roll call. Alderman Begley. No. Alderman Key. Yes. Alderman Lewandowski. No. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. No. Alderman Basso. Aye. Alderman Violet. Yes. Alderman McGrogan. Yes. Alderman Clifford. No. Alderman McGovern. No. It's four to four. I move in the affirmative. Mayor voting aye, motion carried. Okay, so, um, are you done? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, at, um, we had uh, Gareth and um, the president of the, of the Lake Catherine board with us. Uh, last month, the, the Lake Catherine board invited all of us to, to come to a presentation that was similar to what you saw tonight. And our city administrator and the mayor and a couple aldermen um, attended, and uh, because they wanted to share with us what was happening in this current year and what what's up ahead, and uh, it was a nice presentation. You know, a lot of us can probably you know tell the story of Lake, Lake Catherine, but it was nice to see the pictures and to to be reminded of the dates and when all this stuff happened and how many years it's been around in the funding process and all that stuff, and so. Um, we encourage them to uh, first contact Channel 4 and, and actually make a little uh, presentation that could be used on Channel 4 to fill in some of the gaps in their programming. And uh, then the mayor also had them come here and share with all of us because it's, it's very interesting to hear uh, not only what has been done in the past, but what, what we're looking forward to. And so it was nice to have uh, Gareth um, here tonight to, to share all that. Um, and uh, that concludes my report, uh, Mr. Mayor. Roads construction, Alma Clifford. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, motion to, uh, <clears throat> to go out to bid for the 2023 MFT road program. Move by Alma Clifford. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alma Basso. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next motion to go to bid for the 123rd Street Natchez Culvert Reconstruction Project. Move by Alma Clifford. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alma Begley. Discussion? Uh, just so people know what this is, this is the, uh, the rear entrance to Trinity, okay. the main culvert there. Right. It's a major project. It's coming all, up. all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah, motion to adopt resolution for the 2023 MFT program. Move on. Uh -huh. Clifford. Second. Second by Alderman Basso. Roll call. Alderman Basso. Yes, no, maybe. Aye. <laughs> Alderman Clifford. Aye. Alderman Key. Yes. Alderman Violet. Yes. Alderman Lewandowski. Aye. Alderman McGrogan. Yes. Alderman Begley. Yes. Alderman McGovern. Yes. And a motion to adopt the resolution to close Harlem Avenue for the 4th of July parade, July 4th, 2023, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Will by Alderman Clifford. Second. Second. Second by Alderman Begley. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And last, uh, motion to approve payment to Morris Engineering for engineering service various projects around the city in the amount of $19,540.34. Move by Alderman Clifford. Second. Second. Second by Alderman Begley. Discussion? <clears throat> Roll call. Alderman Begley. Yes. Alderman Lewandowski. Aye. Alderman Key. Yes. Alderman McGovern. Yes. Alderman Clifford. Aye. Alderman Violet. Yes. Alderman Basso. Aye. Alderman McGrogan. Yes. Motion carries. And uh, just for a point of notice, uh, some major work will be, be done on Oak Park Avenue from 100, <coughs> Route 83 to 125th Street, both sides, curbs and gutters. The street's in pretty bad shape, so we're going to redo it this year. So uh, letters of warning will be going out to the residents what to expect. It'll be a little, take a little time to do that stretch of road to just notice for that. That's the end of my report. Right. License, permits, and franchises. I'm Lewandowski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No report this evening. All right. Alderman Violet, water and sewer? No report. Business and economic development. 
Alderman Key. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So we have some new businesses in town that have uh, opened up and have their business licenses and ready to go. Um, right at the corner of 127th and Harlem is uh, Schwarmer Brothers, which is a Mediterranean um, a menu. And uh, so they're open now. And then right next to Great American Bagel at 127.78 South Harlem is Meek's Vegan uh, Kitchen, which is actually they have vegan pizzas. Um, across the street, there was a juice shop for the last few years. It's actually the same owner. They've combined those businesses. So it's, uh, you know, a fruit drink bar and a, a vegan menu and, and other things like that. And then finally, Bobolicious Cafe, which is on the northwest corner of 123rd and Harlem, is open also. And that concludes my report. All right. Cable TV, Alderman McGovern. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Channel 4's new studio was again visited, but this time today was visited by AT&T. Needless to say, they were very impressed with all, with all the facilities and television equipment and everything we have in there. It's all state of the art. Most, most of all, they were impressed with the studio operation, the content of our shows, the pro weekly programming, and supporting of the support from the local community. Uh, Ron was actually requested to allow another visit from the senior AT&T staff for a tour of the new building. Uh, the word, the word spread has been spread out on Channel 4 and all their accomplishments. Um, and even as, even as far as uh, last week, I think, last week, two weeks ago, there was a nice front page article in the South Town about Channel 4. Uh, about the new building and how, how well and how efficient it's being run. Congratulations to the staff. Uh, we're up to 10, 10 volunteers, and they just do a remarkable job. That's all I can, that's all I have. All right. Any old business, anyway? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I do have something sure. that you just reminded me of when, um, when Terry and um, uh, Gareth were here, they mentioned that the usage of the, the path along the Kale Sag and um, the rec department does have counters on the east end and the west end of that path. And the east uh, counter for last year had 168,000 people using it. And the west counter was uh, 77,000. Now some of those are tripped by mm -hmm. people coming through yeah. all the way through the, the property. But a lot of people park at Lake Catherine, which is a, a reason that, you know, the sooner we get that second part of the parking lot done, the better. But uh, they do like to park there and either go in one of those two different directions. And that actually was one of the reasons that IDOT was willing to pay for the funding sure. for the lot was because of the fact that it's a gathering or a starting point for the, sure. you know, for tra the uh, trail and, both ways. Yeah. So. And really, if you go to the, to the west um, portion of that and go into, um, uh, you know, Payless Park, um, where they have their parking, if you're, if you're going by there, that's always okay. full too as well. And just a second thing that, that I forgot to mention before, um, at last week's uh, rec department um, meeting, we had uh, Joe and um, Lauren from the rec department gave their annual reports. And it was really exciting to hear the numbers coming out of the programming because just like Gareth was saying that their numbers are up after COVID now and you know things are revitalizing, every program that Lauren mentioned and the use at the, uh, of our facilities in the pool, all the numbers are up, which means revenues are, are up as well. Okay. So that's fantastic news. And that, thank you. All right. Any other old business? Citizens wishing to ask questions? Any new business? Uh, one, one little Here. announcement. Uh, <clears throat> one of our local residents, uh, <clears throat> just like to give him a little plug here, his name is uh, Bob Maslin. Uh, he, he has a local band here and he lives in town. It's called the Mad Poets. Uh, one of the articles is one of the Chicagoland's hottest bands. Is a captivating experience that you don't want to miss. Bob Maz, Maslin is singer and guitarist for the band and they'll be playing locally down at the office on Calseg uh, this Saturday. So if you get a chance, go see me as a resident and give him some support. Okay, great. Any other new business? Need a motion to a recess into executive session for the purpose of so moved. personnel. Move second. Alderman Clifford, second Bellman McGovern. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we'll be back.
Okay. Need a motion to reconvene? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we turn to uh, regular session here. A motion to approve an employment separation contract. Uh, so moved. So moved. Move element. Second. Uh, <laughs> by list seconded by all member <laughs> McGovern. Roll call. Alderman Key. Yes. Alderman Violet. Yes. Alderman Vasso. Aye. Alderman Lewandowski. Aye. Alderman Begley. Yes. Alderman McGrogan. Yes. Alderman McGovern. Yes. Alderman Clifford. Aye. Motion carries. All right. The separation <clears throat> agreement is uh, to, to announce the fact that uh, Chief Larry Yacht has uh, decided to retire effective March, uh, the end of uh, 1159 on March 4th. Uh, so, uh, that being said, we are in need of a new police chief. Uh, with that, I would like to uh, appoint uh, Bill Chukowski, the next uh, police chief of the city of Palos Heights. And he's in a motion to so move. I'll make it second. Move by Alderman <laughs> Key, second by Alderman McGovern. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Aye. 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 Now let's actually March fifth March fifth, Bill. March fifth. <laughs> <laughs> Make this quick. Need a motion to adjourn. So we'll all favor.